Josh Heupel versus Lincoln Riley, who runs their offense better, which is very similar. Let's give a little bit of context. Josh Heupel's offense is not the same offense that Mike Leach ran, for instance, just because it has some tempo and they throw the ball a lot. Josh Heupel's offense to define it is based off wide splits. It is based off tempo. It's based off putting the safety most oftentimes in a very difficult position and making reads off of him. So Heupel's offense and Riley's offense are very similar in that regard. Caleb, they're not even necessarily their offense is not exactly the TCU offense. They all do a little something different, but, those three offenses in particular, before we get to Heupel versus Riley, how would you compare those three offenses? Well, Riley, uh, Hi- Garrett TCU's offense is more is a lot closer to what Mike Leach did. It's it's the air raid that's that actually don't speak ill of the dead, but it, it it adjusts better to to personnel and defensive schemes, whereas. Mike Leach's air raid was I'm sticking to this system the way we run it and I'm not going to change it at all. Yes. And and I I don't think that's even speaking ill of him. It worked out at schools that didn't win a lot of football games before he showed up. So it was, it was simple. They were able to do it. Would it have translated had he got the job at Tennessee? I don't know. I, I I think Tennessee's in a better position with Josh Heupel, frankly. Um, so what do you think of Heupel versus Riley? I'm curious. So I made up a term. I made up a term for their offenses last year, and I called it the Veer and Shoot, which is okay. it's a combination of what of Mike Leach's air raid. It actually does involve that, but it also it brings in the principles of Art Bryles' offense and what he developed at the high right. school level in Texas, which is where you get the wide splits and things like that. They pretty much run the same offenses on different sides of the country. If you really watch Lincoln Riley and Josh Heupel, and for those who want to know a bit of history with this, like you, we talked about this earlier, Josh Heupel was forced to include RPOs and zone read options in his offense in 2014 by Bob Stoops because Bob Stoops got torched by Johnny Manziel in the 2012 Cotton Bowl, 2013 Cotton Bowl. And he wanted to add the element of the RPO that Cliff Kingsbury used in the air rate and force that on Josh Heupel with Trevor Knight. And just so people know, that was not, that was that, for for those who don't know the ins and outs, that's very anathema to the offense Josh Heupel runs and what Trevor Knight can do. There's not as many RPOs. What word did you just use there? Anathema, contradictory, sorry. And blasphemous right. yeah and it, it's it's very it, it you, you i don't know if people noticed this last year there weren't that many rpos i don't think there were any were there by hooker last year in josh heifel's offense i thought there were some on the goal line um yeah i thought there okay. was yeah i, I definitely thought there were some on the goal line but when you're spreading the field at midfield you're not running that many and he was trying to force that because he wanted trevor knight to be johnny manziel it didn't work. It clashed. Oklahoma still had a good offense, but the hype was scapegoated. He was fired. And then he and then Stoops brings in Lincoln Riley to run the exact same offense that Josh Hypo wanted to run. <laughs> and so right. in Oklahoma, that propels Lincoln Riley to head coach, gets him the USC job. Thankfully, Josh Hypo rebuilt himself after being railroaded. But that's where this connection comes into play. Lincoln Riley was allowed to run the offense at Oklahoma. He became a household name running the offense at Oklahoma that Josh Hypo had wanted to run for four years and wasn't allowed to run by Bob Stoops. And now they're running the same offense on different sides of the country. Here's ultimately the debate, right? It's Lincoln Riley has done it longer as a head coach. Josh Heupel. And by the way, Lincoln Riley has a a Heisman trophy winner just this past year. So let's not just dismiss him. Like Heupel is immediately better just because you might live in East Tennessee. I think the debate is Lincoln Riley has done it longer and had more success as opposed to Josh Heupel has done it with lesser parts, particularly at Tennessee and Central Florida, and has had success. So it depends which side of the coin you want to take in that regard. So let's get your thoughts on on the message board. Me, if I'm an AD, 
I'm going to go with Lincoln Riley, the more surefire thing right now. We could be having a totally different conversation in a year because this would be two straight years if, if Tennessee is able to get great play out of, or even very good play out of its quarterback position, then I stand corrected. I stand corrected on Hendon Hooker, who I thought had accuracy issues. If Josh Heupel does it again with Joe Milton, I'll stand corrected again, and then I might have a different take. But right now, if I'm an AD, I am going to I'm going to take Leak and Riley just because of track record. I am going to take, and I'm st- I'll, I'll I'll play your game on track record, Dave. And with track record, I'm still taking Josh Heupel, and I'll tell you why. Okay. All right. Here we go. Hey Josh, Hy- <laughs> Josh Heupel has been an offensive since being fired by Oklahoma and being allowed to run his, his offense. He's been an offensive coordinator or a head coach, really all, calling the plays basically for eight years now. And four of those have been in the SEC. None of them have been in the SEC for R- Lincoln Riley. Two of those for Josh Heupel, just so you guys understand, were at Missouri. When Missouri was, by all accounts, the worst, most on-fire program in the SEC. I don't know if you guys know this, but Josh Heibel took over Missouri after the whole Mizzou protest scandal thing in 2015. That was not a desirable job. And Barry Odom, to his credit, made the right move to bring in Josh Heupel as offensive coordinator. And Josh Heupel had Drew Locke throwing for 500 yards a game, or had Drew Locke's offense putting up 500 yards a game against SEC defenses for two years at the worst school in the SEC at the time. He then comes back to the SEC and takes over, by all accounts, what was the most on-fire program in the SEC as head coach, which was Tennessee. And in two years, he's got them in the top. He has a Heisman candidate at quarterback. I think doing that, I think that track record favors Josh Heupel, honestly, more than – I don't think Lincoln Riley has taken – Lincoln Riley took over Oklahoma for Bob Stoops when the program was already rolling. He went to USC, which already had talent, and he brought his quarterback with him. Lincoln Riley twice walked into good situations. Josh Heupel took over terrible situations. Okay. I'm going to give you something else that's going to strengthen your argument against me. Because I, if I'm an AD, I'm taking Lincoln Riley. I can get ripped on the message board if you want me to. I may have a totally different take in eight months, nine months. Um, But Lincoln Riley is doing it and has done it against defenses that – weren't very good. I mean, when he was at the Big 12, I mean, there was a ton of points scored. They couldn't play with the SEC more times than not. And the Pac-12, the defenses are even worse, Caleb. So he has had that ability. So that strengthens your argument. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, Again, though, to strengthen my argument, has, you know, has Tennessee truly played for a championship? I, mean, I can't say that they they have because of the way they fell so flat against South Carolina. They were on the verge of it, but they haven't. Lincoln Riley has. I also would think that Lincoln Riley, given his experience, might have an answer when things went so wrong in Columbia. Now, maybe with the Jeremy Banks issue earlier and Hooker getting hurt, it just was never going to happen, and that's possible. But I would like to think a more tenured coach would have an answer at some point mid-game, right? But there was no answer for Tennessee and Josh Ivey. I mean, before we get there, and this isn't necessarily because of his offense and his defense if you watch those games, but can Lincoln Riley win a playoff game? Can he win one college football playoff game? He's 0-3 against the SEC He when he was at Oklahoma and played in the college football playoff. And the last one was an embarrassed one. I mean, they lost, I think, 63 to 28 to LSU in 2020, 2019. And so, yes, the South Carolina game, they laid an egg. But look at what Lincoln Riley's, what's been happening to him. Now, he did beat an SEC team in a bowl game. I think he beat Florida in 2020. He beat Dan Mullen in Florida. 2020. I'm I'm really to the point where I would like to take all bowl records and just throw them away. Because I covered so many of those. I don't know who was motivated half the time. I knew after the game, after watching the game. But if you start citing Lincoln Riley here and Lincoln Riley there in bowl games, I would have to go back and look. Were the, were the I mean, were both teams adequately motivated 
to win whatever they needed to win at that particular time. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't well, remember that. I don't remember the Ford as motivation going in. What we're really seeing is bowl games are actually, ironically, what they used to be before when the polls count were counted before the, the at the end of the regular season and before the bowl games. It's, for those who don't know, bowl games were glorified exhibitions through the 1960s. I mean, I can go through the list of teams that have national championships and lost their bowl games, including the 51 Falls. And but I, Wait, I'm kind of with. You. I think they were kind of glorified exhibitions up until like. 2000 when they had or 98 when they had the bcs system well the elite from the 70s through the 90s the elite bowls were teams cared to win those games tennessee cared about that 85 sugar bowl they didn't have a national championship to play for but they cared about playing in that 85 sugar bowl yeah but it was so hit or miss still i mean no they cared about the 85 one but does anybody remember the 84 86 bowl game they played in didn't they play in the Peach Bowl in 86? Well, I mean, you would, but most people yeah. would. <laughs> yes. and, and I look at some of the other bowl games that, yeah, I don't think Tennessee, I mean, Tennessee wasn't motivated to play in the 99 Fiesta Bowl, it would have been the 2000 Fiesta Bowl after the 99 season. Um, I question if they were motivated in the 97 Orange Bowl when they lost to Nebraska because Michigan had won the day before, so they found out even if they had won that game, they wouldn't have been national champions. They were absolutely not motivated to play in that game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was all determined. Mm -hmm. um, it was the question was, will Nebraska split with Michigan or will Michigan be national champs outright? Tennessee had no shot by the time, by the time Pete Manning's last game kicked off. And I mean, that that's a fair debate. You're right. Let's throw out bowl games. But in, so in games that matter, Lincoln Riley's never beaten an SEC team. And that, that, Except for when he was offensive coordinator, he did beat Tennessee in 2015, but that's because Butch Jones choked away that game. And Lincoln Riley's offense only scored 20 points. So, Yes, Smoky Mountain Red, Caleb is an NCAA football historian. There's no question about that. Portions of the program brought to you by Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hanna. Look at me. I don't have glasses. I don't have contacts. I got LASIK. It's fantastic. They do cataract surgery as well. And the great part is they're local. Local, local. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn, also with their individual vision centers, can take care of your annual checkups and such. I'm looking at myself when I'm uh, pointing out that I'm not wearing glasses or contacts, and I'm realizing that, well, I went camping over the weekend, so I got a lot of sun, and Caleb has the brightest light ever, so I suddenly look like an incredibly tan individual. I'm also just a very, very, very pale person so I, you know i feel like uh ricardo montabon doing the lincoln commercials back in well, the for day. those for those who don't know i'm an ncaa story historian because i actually died in like 1940 and i'm coming back i'm back as a ghost and so he's an old soul <laughs> he plays dean martin and joey bishop constantly on his uh pad what was it before the ipad the little thing that we had that was about as heavy as a brick ipod was it iPod? Yes, that's what it was. So that's Caleb listens to only the Rat Pack in his iPod.